Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got a quick peek at weather, and we'll dive into the ongoing science of solar super flares. The science moves forward in another not-so-happy way. We're starting and ending with the sun, and here's the last 24 hours on our star. Satellite recalibration roll, always annoying. Lots of filament collapse events there during it, wasn't there? Indeed, none release CMEs, however. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, but we may take a minor coronal hole stream later today. We'll be watching for that. And as for the solar eruption watch, big sunspots are departing already pretty much past Earth-directed position. Over on the left, a sizable active region is cresting into view. will be the primary watch in about three or four days, but until then, it's pretty much the plasma filaments, which are numerous. They've been destabilizing the last 24 hours, so if that transitions to eruptive activity, they could be fired our way. We will be watching that as well. Prayers for the flood areas. Here's Cincinnati. It's a lot of water. The major spring rains have begun and these extreme downpours will be the standard where the jet stream directs them for about the next two months. Maybe pay a bit more attention to the forecast this season. Conditions are primed for extremity. Speaking of extremity, let's talk about super flares. Given the fact that it is well understood that the level of flare needed to end the modern world and send us back to the Stone Age is not even really quite up at super flare levels, and then when the geology tells us that the sun does super flare every couple centuries with titanic events every few millennia, gets a little concerning about when the next one might be. Essentially, it's a global scale EMP event from the sun. Everything electric breaks, every wire melts, and we're back in caveman times with 98% of the species dead in about 6 to 12 months due to the collapse of infrastructure. So yes, it's a big deal, especially since we're due for the next one in the next decade or two. So this is the standard paper in the field. It was three decades in the making and has been confirmed six times in the last three years from a physics perspective. Super flares every 150 to 200 years with the major events on millennial, 3,000, and 6,000 year scales. Suspiciously similar to Earth's geomagnetic and climate cycles, huh? Not a coincidence. But now they've gone out and looked for other solar type stars, but this time they did it to a crazy degree. This team had thought that just because a star is sun-like doesn't mean it has the energetic activity levels of the sun. So they narrowed it down and narrowed it down and were left with only one other star left, just one that was close enough for this team. And they happened to catch it super flaring, about X200. That is more than twice as large as what would take out the modern world, so Basically, they were shaking their heads and eliminating data, fingers in the ears, nana nana, reducing, doubting, you get the idea. And they found the scary thing anyway. Yeah, sun, about a decade or two. Folks, be sure to plan your trip to come out to Observer Ranch this year. Lots of major events, lots of smaller ones too. This month, there are three Ben days, and then of course I'll be at the grand opening at the end of the month. This includes the 13th Sunday when those doing the quail class will find me there waiting for you when you're done. Lots of different ways to stay at the ranch, and it all begins at ObserverRanch.com, or you can call us. We do old school as well. Greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.